interesting. I thought that was a good place to start. So even the rest of the people who were now, when we did the re-evaluation, the price range came in at that, but the best price when there was a re-evaluation came in at 6.2. 6.02 actually. Which year now that's in regards to that one? It came in at 6.063319346. And, and, and we have a copy of that document? To you, Madam PS. I'm going to give you this whole pack, uh, Chair. It, in, it has the uh, document you required earlier, which was the bank guarantee. It also has the contract, and we have also the contract the prices, meantime. and it has everything else that you need. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, in your own wisdom, what do you think was the role of Minister of Works? Did you appreciate their work? Why did you bring them on board? If you never f uh, thought that whatever they brought on table was very important for you, no, the Ministry of Works was important throughout because I was the very person who suggested that we bring them on board and that's why I wrote to my uh, counterpart in Ministry of Works to give me engineers. This was a very serious task. Without that report, their role was very important. It's the same thing with uh, looking at the dilapidation report. I got it dilapidation report from the university. It was done 2019, but still I think uh, the structure is well maintained. So the superstructure is fit and you can even move to second day. So when we invited them to continue working with us, somehow, of course, the Honorable Chair, with due respect, when, when the PS comes and tells this committee that these people were too busy, when we have them on board, it's very important to tell us how busy they were, not even to help the government when actually they first came on board. And, and they are paid for that. And we have uh, Minister of Works. Uh, we did not consider the, the, the market price at that time. Chair, sure, we did consider the market price. If you noted in our submission, the original, after presenting to the management, we went back, we visited the rates, considering that the contractor had to work while this was I would like the committee to know that if this had been an open domestic bid, we know that. But because we went through a few, that's why we got extremely high rates. But whatever the ministry gave is was of the market preparing rate at the time. How busy were you, Chair? Were you very busy to assist the ministry? Chair. I don't consider that to be a pro government of Uganda to do certain roles. And in the event that I am busy, I do not work alone. We are a team of revenue engineers, architects, and QSs who could have come in as paid in the evaluation because we are never all upon to evaluate. According to my understanding of instances where Ministry of Works has actually had cost estimates that are lower than uh, what they need. But the difference normally is not so much. But in the event that it's deep, there's a difference, the procurement expert here can tell us what the law advises us in the contract about the process that has been given. Thank you. Chair. The vocation ended. Chair, I'm sorry. I wanted to know what your role would be because you left it on the way. What As the technical advisors on behalf of, our, of the advising projects is to ensure one, that works are implemented within the timelines, that they are to the quality that is expected to be used and the Building Control Act and its regulations, is to ensure that we have value for money, that what we are paying for is actually what has been done. So you were given 8 billion, you did a procurement of 6.2 billion for a contract. Where is the work plan for this work? Because the Minister of Finance has never seen the work plan. Actually, they approved it on the FB system. It's approved that I will give you the approval on the FB system. 
because uh, what, what is what in this work plan? Share with us the eight billion. We are going to call someone in the office to print it off and bring it before we close. Okay. Thank you. Before uh, uh, Honorable Soro comes in, under what legal framework did you give or did you pay contractor over and above the 30% threshold? Thank you very much, Chair. Now, once the funds are committed, like for example, if I were to leave those funds on the system of IFMIS, they will pass back into the consolidated fund. Now, because the contractor had already given us a bank guarantee, even in the bank they were going to limit his access. So, even if the amount of 4.8 billion was wired onto the account of the service provider, he only still had access to the third at that time. The question was, under what legal problem? We had a bank guarantee. I will ask my uh, head of legal to answer the part of the legal framework. What question, Chair? Is the bank guarantee a legal framework? Because she's saying she had a bank guarantee. Is it a legal framework? It was a requirement under the contract, contract that we signed with him, which is a legal document. We are, we are verifying the bank guarantee with POU, I'm sure. We shall have information shortly because uh, there seem to be issues in the debts. And another, but under what legal framework? Let's first finish this one. If there's nothing, you just say there's none. Don't tell us a story, the humanity of our circumstance there we did this under what legal framework. What is that? The PPE contract management regulations. Proceed, your chair. Order chair. Yes, uh, we have the case uh, order, 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 order. Order uh, chair. I had the uh, uh, PS requesting the head of labor to, to give clarity. Who is the head of labor? So I'm going to ask Mr. David Mutegeki to give the clarity because he was directly involved in this transaction. I thank you. So that's, that's, that's chair. Honorable chair, uh, I'm seeking your, your guidance too. It's true. She was never involved from the other procurement. But telling us the legal framework, a, a, a real council cannot fail to cite a legal framework, much as she was not involved. She's the head of procurement, and she's the head of the legal department. So at this time, we are not asking that she can help us. Now that she's here, she also tells us how she interprets the law. The matter who they decide to because the accounting officer is the one going to be held live when case there's a problem. So she's the one to decide who's going to respond on her behalf. If she thinks David is the one going to respond, let him respond and then we shall we shall take whatever is telling us and uh, make observations as a committee. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, when you read section 47 the PPDA contract management regulations uh, on payments made to provide before receipt of the labor force. It specifies that a payment can be made to the provider before receipt of deliverables after presenting an appropriate payment security. Okay, I have noted that. We don't need to get into an argument now. Okay, um, <coughs> What justification do you give for using restricted method for a contract above 500 million as stipulated in the law? Legal justification. Uh, I'll take you briefly back to the law. When you read section 79 of the BBDA Act, it gives them various modes from section 80 to about section 86 and the various modes of procurement required under the law. So, when you go to section 6 of the PPDA, uh, PPDA regulations uh, on procurement of supplies and services, it provides
provides that uh, if certain requirements are met, then a choice of uh, if it, uh, certain requirements are set, uh, set up under section six of uh, the regulations on the criteria used to determine the choice of procurement. And uh, the accounting office has really specified that at one point the building was in such a very bad shape, one of the ministers had nowhere to ease themselves. So, in those circumstances, what was the best alternative? Under such, under such circumstances within the law, how to proceed to create an avenue for a minister to have an easy facility? So I believe uh, in the wisdom of the accounting officer and the wisdom of the head of procurement uh, available at that time, they preferred the use of uh, restricted domestic feeding. But the proviso in that law is that there must be competition and value for money. And I believe uh, there was competition because three farms needed, and there was value for money because we'd be invited on Friday to come and see whether actually there is value for money. Thank you. We have come to this response as well. Uh, yes, Chair, as if I've not had the, the, the gist you asked under what law that they use it to get to a restricted big deal, something above. As if he was trying to, to meander the other side. It is okay, it is meandering. We have received what he has said in response to our question. We are going to observe and we shall write a report with our view on whatever is telling us. We don't need to waste a lot of time now. Uh, the Deputy Chair asked earlier, why did you qualify companies that did not have annual turnover of 6 trillion? Accounting officer? Thank you very much. Um, if you really think about it, even the biggest construction firms that we have on the market do not exceed a turnover of 3 trillion. Now, I don't know whether those were obsolete terms under the PTA, but uh, sometimes you realize that some of them are meant to fees out uh, local content and exclude the local players. Because in our in our market, none of those, even local wouldn't exceed the three trillion mark. So I think uh, maybe it's time to actually look at that threshold. But um, for me, for what we wanted, we didn't want to use a, a, a sledgehammer to, to crack a nut. It was sufficient even for the uh, small MSMEs uh, that, that be the two actually carry out this work. And it's so far done a great job. Still, I think we need to come to see if they work. We will also appreciate the work of our local service providers. Thank you. Then we have received that response. The Deputy Chair, are you satisfied? Actually, have local presence here, and uh, under our champion by Uganda through Uganda, this is something we take very seriously because we are the custodians of this uh, kind of requirement. So. As long as you put someone who is actually like a provider locally for us, that was good enough. Thank you. Just a minute, Brother Reko Soru. You did not give us. Can we have the MOE you signed with the landlord of Farmer's House in as far as that innovation is concerned? I'm going to ask someone to. Is that the MOE? Can you have proof of that, that the company has provided a turnover of 6 trillion? 
actually, I'm just told just now that even the six trillion was an error in the document. It's supposed to be six billion. Well, but there's no proof that anyone, no one submitted this. According to them, they could not go with it, according to what the case has told us, because it's something pretty careful there to fail some company. Like, who even cannot have this annual turn over the Yes. <coughs> no, 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 no. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, Ministry of Works, we need the formal procedure. We need your role in uh, this kind of process. We need all this today. It's not to finish. We don't want to call you back. We are very busy people. We are very busy people. As they are also getting the documents, everything must come now. Uh, honorable Sun, Honorable Barbara. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I have two questions to ask. And one is, as far as uh, the supplementary expenditure is concerned, I want to know, did you as the accounting officer or the Minister of Trade meet the standard expected of, of public finance management act? Section 10 and 11, that is 23. And then, secondly, at the time of authorization for the change of flag, have you, Madame Pierce, shared the bill of quantity concerning the renovation of the farmer's house of the PSS? Thank you very much, Sunday. Really. Uh, I'm going to just check and see what section 10 and 11. Under the Public Finance Management Act, so I can respond to the member. But in the meantime, uh, the PSST, one, didn't request for the POQs, but secondly, I was, there was also no mandatory requirement to share within the POQs. But still, if he had asked for them, I would still be very happy to share them with him. Yeah, she checks for the second question, Honorable Walker. Thank you, Chair. Honorable members, they, we are waiting for the work plan. That's where those things of transportation uh, and the laptops are going to come. The work plan for the 8 billion. They are producing it, they are looking for it, I think, somewhere. Honorable Walker. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I'd like to know what informed the case's decision for the move. That is procurement, administration, legal, and backups uh, from the system and their duties are sent to their engineers and the bonus at the same time. Uh, thank you, Chair. Through you, I wanted to start by responding to the member who brought in the section 10 and 11. Second budget call circular. Now, my understanding is that uh, at that time there were new ministers and the uh, new PS is appointed. So therefore, I, there was a new, uh, then there were new needs which were brought in by the new ministers. And uh, in their wisdom, they thought that it was not wise for us to uh, keep a, a, a dilapidated environment of work. The, the work, the, the state of work space was not decent. So. I didn't look back to see the ministerial policy, policy statement uh, as requested because there was there was nothing in there, uh, even as per my hand over. That, that section of renovation was never part of the ministerial policy statement. Now, I think I think that is now which is which now fits into section eleven. So there will be no uh, the, the flow the flow is such that now you need a policy statement was not included in that policy statement. It was a supplementary additional that was required uh, after the original budget was submitted. So the other question was, for the staff that uh, you were talking about, for example, if I start uh, with Mr. Lapierre, you see, when they did, when he did the, the best evaluated bidder notice on a Sunday, you will see, and I will ask my head of uh, legal, sorry, head of uh, procurement at the moment, these bids are not accepted if they are outside uh, working days. That's Monday to Friday. But it came in on the 7th of November 2021. 
and uh, signed the best evaluated leader notice at 3.2 billion. Now, when, when I received Who was that, that, this is Mr. Alfred Lapierre. Which company? The company he had signed off was called Maybach Motors Limited. That is for vehicles. That's not for big issues. Uh -huh. Well, they had asked me why. I had asked one of the, uh, sorry, four officers. So I'm giving him one by one. Why? Okay. And uh, in this case, there was a best evaluated bidder at 2.82 billion. And uh, they were complaining why they had been also sidelined from the procurement. When I asked uh, Mr. Lapien, he said well, those people didn't have uh, a pile of attorney in their big document. When I asked the actual bidder, they said you do not have powers of attorney. He said, ma'am, this was our original submission. Actually, the powers of attorney were in the original document, which meant that their, their record might have been defaced. But because I was swayed by the saving of 385 million, I actually uh, told him, you know what, we need to actually consider these people who are actually less than 3.2. So when he resisted and was trying to delete Dali on, the, on my submissions and requests, I just removed him from the system because I, I realized he was actually failing me uh, on actually acquiring value for money. And that is also a justification which uh, any accountant officer would have undertaken. So that is what happened in that case. Now, in the case of uh, Everest and DC, as you know, he is also under facing disciplinary. The only issue is that uh, first I was told there was an allegation of him trying to uh, threaten another officer at work. But on top of that, there were issues and questions that were not answered on fuel appropriation. And those ones are still under review and undergoing a disciplinary proceeding. Yes. Head of legal, there is a time I actually... Let them first respond to the questions. We agreed to do question and answer. Submit whatever evidence you have. We are going to give them a chance to also defend themselves. Thank you, Chair. And then in the case of uh, Miss Sandra Leno, there is a time I actually asked her for a litigation report because I knew that there was so much, uh, there is a litigation risk. Any manager who is doing uh, risk management, you would actually look at the cases that are before court. Which, which the ministry was involved. I remember asking her for the report, and uh, she took ages without giving me this report until I sent an email and I said, Sandra, can I please have the litigation report of the ministry? And I think even then, it took her about two, three months to give it to me. So that one, I'll go back and look at the emails which I sent. But litigation is timely, and I actually need a good representation for us because. In the end, there is a case of land which we lost just out of failure to get representation. And it is in the Auditor General's report. And when I asked her how did we lose this land, she told me and she wrote a report and said, well, I am not uh, the person supposed to be representing the ministry, it's the Attorney General. But my understanding is that the Attorney General has structures that are given uh, to support the ministries and other MDAs. And uh, Sandra refused to turn up in court to defend our land, and that's how we lost that land. Nevertheless, we managed to launch a, an appeal in the appeals court to try and save that very piece of land. So I was thinking, you know, this is going to be counterproductive, which will actually bring the challenges. As an accounting officer, and this was a very big man, and uh, for me, she didn't even see the gravity of her exclusion from the process to start to protect us. As, uh, okay. the, the Can we have those officers respond? Mm. Mr. Lapiem, there is a document here uh, where you are you signed the um, validated Peter. Chair, can I have a look at it? Can the rest respond? Respond to the allegations? Uh, yeah, let, me, let me proceed. Huh? 
I'm also going to say what I know and uh, the origin because uh, if it was true, what is an allegation, since it has written a disciplinary to me, that's all maybe in prediction if I did something which is contrary. Uh, almost all the head of the department and the uh, docket in finance and administration was struck off. Head of human resources was pushed out at that time, using junior. Head of planning was pushed out, he's now in use for work. Head of IT is a director, and that post does not exist. Head of accounts is struck off. Head plus the senior, he was a company. The name is right. Head of administration, actually, that's career and other sector is not working. And all other, then head of records, you know. Now, for me, and the accounting officer, the day we disagreed, I was in our office. There is a letter here from uh, that's the origin of our, of our disagreement. The letter is written by Engineer Tony Kabuma, Chief Mechanical Engineer. Now, emergency program was about specified type from local car dealers. That's the heading. From a local car dealers. Not written by me, but the engineer's government. I presented this document. This document was sent to her, was, was, was sent to the accounting officer. And see what's happening, this document. It was from her, not from me. The document clearly specifies the vehicle which we are supposed to be inspected. Then all the census numbers are here. These are for two vehicles from Virginia to Kabuma. I want to read you what made us to disagree. Um, it was written like this. Allow me to read. The vehicles are without traces of tampering and alteration on their subparts. The odometers were found to be above half a kilometer. They are relatively low and could be occasioned as a result of loading and loading by the dealers. Why the vehicles are serviceable and fall within the age bracket, the purchase of government vehicles will not establish the existence of the manufacturer's warranty cover. We cannot establish warranty for this vehicle. We cannot establish consequence in their service and future performance cannot be reliably guaranteed. Additionally, supplier ability to offer same service support will not be ascertained. Yet it is an essential ingredient, ingredient for the vehicle's future, future performance. <coughs> Apart from mechanical conditions, the chief mechanical engineer is also expected to assess the vehicle reasonableness of prices. Consequently, we have valued while taking consideration their age, condition, and mileage, estimated to be a region of 500 million. Apart from about technical guidance, which could form decision to procure the same vehicle, we are advised to obtain clearance from permanent secretary, secretary to the treasury, before acquisition to adhere to give their regulation. The purpose of this, of right to do, is to avoid with above technical guidance to facilitate decision to apply. Upon the position you are formally, you will apply to this ministry. So when I look at uh, the cost of the vehicle, then the vehicle without warranty, then the vehicle with service of cannot be guaranteed. I sat in our office, we were two of us. Then when we discussed this letter, Buy this or this. I say I cannot buy this vehicle because it is risky. She say I will protect you. I say I don't believe that. Because accounting officer, for like uh, in OPM, accounting officer cannot protect the technical person. So she asked me a question Will you procure this vehicle or not? I didn't say no. I bent my head down, then I, I shook my head. Then she said, Get out of my office. And that was the last time I talked to her. If you did, I, I really need to see calendar. If indeed this is the reason to struggle of the system, she should have written a disciplinary case to me or some sanction to be made. So I think that's not the reason. The, 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 the
purposes of getting the payment for the first two vehicles, the one of water Minister of State for trade and the one of peace, so that the company could get money to source for more vehicles. When he gave it to me, I told him, can you give me a copy of the contract so that I can ascertain myself that this company I'm dealing with is a rightful company. I told him, in the absence of a contract or an approval on this request by PS, I will not be able to approve the company because I had the approving rights. The gentleman left my office. As like I said, it was time for going home, I slopped down to the basement to drive up and go home. Before I could drive out of the basement, the parking, I received a phone call from the PS. She says, I understand you have refused to approve this company. I'm kindly requesting that you, you approve it because I need to make a payment immediately for this company which is having financial issues so that it can get money for these two vehicles to proceed and source for more vehicles. The remaining thing. I told her, P.S., if the person who has come to you explained properly, I told him A, B, C, D. It is a requirement because I need to safeguard myself. She said, finally, I have done what you wanted me to do. You can now go ahead and help me and approve. I said, fine, let, them, let him come back with the phone. I'm still within the building. I have not left. I went back to my office at level 3, room 315, 3.15. Logged in, approved the company. Chair, I can take the, the request form or letter with all its communications there too. What I got to learn after a few weeks is that I had been taken off the system much as I did not get this communication myself. They had brought to me another request to approve and when I attempted to access the system I was not accessing it. When I inquired later, I was told a letter had been sent to finance to remove me from the system for reasons of course which I did not understand. And the person actually who was put on the system is the person who had been transferred to another entity but had kept Leila in, in the ministry for quite a number of weeks, Mr. Openja Joseph. I think it uh, in respect of that. Two, concerning the issue PS raised about the so-called threatening according, that is something that came much later after this transaction and after it had been taken off the system. But I will want to preserve it and address it under a different head, which you introduced, Chair, when you are making your communication from the Chair, because it is a bit detailed. Thank you. Can we have the council? Uh, I would like to start by refuting that allegation about the three months. Three months is a long time. But I gave her the, the work after three months, but it's not a lie. And I want to say it on the uh, record that that's a lie. Um, secondly, uh, the issue of that land, the litigation. As you know, the, the, the legal officers in the ministries work with the ministries of justice, with the minister of justice. We, we literally, our role is to avail them the necessary documents or whatever they need to represent us. But the constitution is clear. The one that represents the government in court is the attorney general. Now, so this one is a very interesting case. It actually started way before I even joined the ministry, but I came in and worked and found it when the late ambassador man was at yes. And the late ambassador man operated in such a way that administrative issues, including land matters, were a result of the principal assistant secretary. And by then, the principal assistant secretary was Mr. Messiger. Messiger? Messiger Milton. So this is Mr. Messiger who handled everything to do with the ministry land. That's how the police had chosen to do it. So he would only come to me occasionally 
with some issues. But for this particular land matter, I can say it again and I can even repeat it on all, that this one he handled with a colleague from the Ministry of Justice. I will remember her name and I will submit it to you, Chair, and she's ready to, to come here and give you clarity. Because when I was written to a letter, which was drafted by my colleague, my dear colleague that I came to life for a PSC signature, accusing me of being negligent and causing government to lose uh, property, I responded to that letter very clearly. Every point that they raised against me, I was negligent, I didn't appear in court. I clearly expressed myself in that letter. And my summary was that if, before I even proceed, I went to the Attorney General's office, I met uh, the police, who then even said we can go to the solicitor general because he's aware about this matter. If your peers indeed need further information on this matter, she can write to us. So this, I think she's called Charity, she provided, she said, I can provide very clear information. This is not something that they should put on you. If they want information about this matter, we are the ones to answer. And the issue of not appearing in court, those are all semantics right now. But to tell you that if you want further information about that matter, please, the Minister of Justice is very clear, they can provide it to you clearly. Okay, in your understanding, what do you think, <clears throat> what personal brand does the PS have? I don't know. Chair, yeah. 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 That was a question raised by Honorary Barber and it has been responded to. Can we have more questions? Honorary Bochina? Thank you, Chair. I have two questions to Madame Pies. And the first one is I want to know whether the Minister responsible for finance, because he's the head of Treasury, was aware or in agreement with your decision to renovate the farmer's house. And the second one, did the contractor present security for works as required by law? And what kind of security did the company present and how did you deal with it as a ministry? Thank you. Three, Chair. At the technical level, when I inform the PSST, who is the equivalent of myself within the Ministry of Finance, that is sufficient. And I think now they could update uh, the political heads within the Ministry of Finance, maybe in their top management meetings or any other meetings. So uh, that one, I don't know whether the Honorable Kasaija was aware that we were doing renovations. Yes, uh, the securities that we are presented by the company, we are the bank guarantee that we have, and I have tendered that document to the chairperson. Um, I, I want to know from Madam Pies, like, who is supposed to inform the minister? So is that Honorable Kasaija or my minister? Yes, Minister of Finance. That would be the PSST. My question goes to everybody I receive uh, much after is that whoever has attempted to give any piece of advice or give a contrary view, the consequences have not been desired. Thank you, Chair. So, Chair, thank you. I want uh, members. I said I pointed out what I wanted to be done, and I gave two conditions. I either see a copy of the contract, or I see PSE's approval on that request of which the latter was done, and I acted basing on that. And you can see it clearly. There are three minutes on that communication which I have given, all signed on the same day. Chair, Chair the response is confusing. Is he telling the committee that he approved under the US? Chair, no. Yes or no? No. 
Okay, now the tips. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in terms of the actual day of payment, I would have to go back and look at the system, but it was before the year ended. We paid okay. before 30th of June 2021. Sari Construction was uh, named best evaluated bidder <coughs> on 11th June. The guarantee came on 17th June. <coughs> the bank guarantees came after evaluation and after you had signed. Do you have an explanation, please? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, uh, towards the end of June, I was out of the country, but I contacted the bank and asked them if they were actually processing the bank guarantee. And for them, it was just a question of delay, like a delayed output. But they were sure that, they, that uh, Sarik had met all the requirements of being issued a bank guarantee. What interest did you have as an accounting officer to follow up on a specific company to the extent of calling their bank to establish whether they actually have that guarantee? Because it's supposed to go through a formal process, evaluation, look at the documents from A, B, C, D. So at what point, there were three companies, there was Silcar, there was Jack's Consult. What interest did you have to call Cairo to find out? I thought it would have been official. Uh, Sarik submits their documents with a bank guarantee. The evaluation committee does its job independently and then they pick out the best evaluated I didn't have any personal interest. I had an interest of time and time budgeting. The first thing was that Sarik themselves managed to quote the lowest. And when we asked them if they could, they, if they had a bank guarantee, they said they can actually get one. So we put them under pressure to actually get one. Because was the requirement, when, the when, when you are doing restricted bid, was one of the requirements a bank guarantee? Tom again. So it did not go with the actual document of the bidding. So it became a requirement afterwards, just to protect the funds of the of government. According, according to PPDA, for you to award the contract worth six point two billion, you are trying to tell us it is not a requirement for you to have a bank guarantee. The stage is share. Apparently that requirement is not there. So, and uh, I wanted you to also look at the time frames we were dealing with. If that money had been approved, if it had been uh, granted to us uh, to start the procurement process, it would have been much better for us. But that money was approved in August, actually in uh, July 2021. And then it was disbursed in April 2022. Final quarter, when there is left only two months, for, for that money to bounce and go back to the treasury. So we would have lost out on both sides. So if, if there were no requirements, did you also call the bank for Miss James Jack's consult? Did you call the bank for Silcar Engineering? Or you called only the bank for Sari? I only called the bank for the person who quoted the lowest. Okay. Yes. Question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.